welcome back to the channel. Right before I start, I would like to give a shout out to Troyman92020. Uh, Troyman was the one who suggested this creepy pasta, and I would like to thank you, Troyman, for making the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And anybody else, if you have any suggestion for creepy pastas or SCPs, uh, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll give you a shout out when I do. One. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video and make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It helps out a lot. SCP-087 is located on the campus of the doorway leading to SCP-087 is constructed of re reinforced steel with an electro-release lock mechanism. It has been disguised to resemble a janitor closet consistent with the design of the building. The lock mechanism of the doorknob will not release unless bolts are applied in conjunction with counterclockwise rotation of the key. The inside of the door is lined with 6 centimeters of industrial foam padding. Due to the results of the final exploration, see document 0874, no personnel are permitted access to SCP-087. SCP-087 is a unit platform staircase. Stairs descend on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircular platform of approximately 3 meters in diameter. Descent directions rotate 180 degrees at each platform. The design of SCP-087 limits subjects to see a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights. A light source is required for any subject exploring SCP-087 as there are no light fixtures or windows present. Light sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective as SCP-087 seems to absorb excess light. Subjects report and audio recordings confirm that distress vocalizations from what is presumed to be a child between the ages of and the source of the distress calls is estimated to be located approximately 200 meters below the initial platform. However, any attempts to descend the staircase have failed to bring subject closer to the source. The depth of descent calculated from exploration 4, the longest depth, the longest exploration, is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and the geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-087 has an endpoint. SCP-087 has undergone four video recording explorations by Class D personnel. Each subject conducting an exploration has encountered SCP-087-1, which appears as a face with no visual pupils, nostrils, or mouth. The nature of SCP-0871 is entirely unclear, but it has been determined that it is not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia and fear when faced with SCP-0871, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or simply natural reactions. Over a period of two weeks following Exploration 4, several members of the staff and students from the campus reported knocking at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds per knock coming from the interior of SCP-087. The door leading to SCP-087 has been fitted with 6 cm thick industrial padding. All reports of the knocking have ceased. 
The following document is a conversation between D8432 and Dr. Ad Control. D8432 is a 43-year-old Caucasian male of average build and appearance and unremarkable psychological background. Class D designation is a result of demotion due to the mishandling of SCP. D8432 is equipped with a 75 watts flood lamp with a battery power capable of lasting 24 hours. A handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream and an audio headset for communication with doctor at controls. D8432 steps through the doorway onto initial platform. Despite the wattage, the flood lamp only illuminates the first nine steps. The second platform is not visible. It's fucking dark in here. Is your flood lamp functioning properly? D8432 shines the light out the door and into the academic building's hallway. The light reaches significantly further. Yeah, it's working. It just won't uh, light this, these stairs all the way down. Thank you. Please continue. D8432 descends for 13 steps before reaching the second platform. The platform is in the shape of a semicircle with an apparently concrete surface and walls. There are no distinct markings aside from the non discrete patches of dust, dirt, and wear consistent with that which is found in a typical concrete stairwell. D8432 rotates 180 degrees to begin descending down the second flight, then pauses. Reason for stopping? You heard that? That's a fucking kid down there. Sounds like one. None of the described audio is feeding through the camera or mic at this time. Could you please describe the sound? It's a young, it's young. Uh, either a female or very young boy. It's crying and sobbing and, and saying, uh, please help. Please help. Um, yeah, it keeps repeating that and crying. Can you estimate the distance from your current location? Uh, f fuck, um, I don't know, I guess 200 meters down? Please continue down the next flight of stairs. The subject ascends another 13 steps. As he reaches the landing, audio of the child as described it, is picked up. The child alternates between sobbing, wailing, and the words, please, help, and down here. The level of audio is consistent with d 43 to report of it being approximately 200 meters below. Can you still hear the crying? Yeah. We're picking it up as well. Please continue down. Stop if you notice any change in the audio or environment. The subject descends another three flights of stairs before stopping. Keep going? Please. D8432 continues another 17 flights total of 22 flights before stopping. There are no visible changes in the environment and each flight has been a consistent 13 steps. I'm not getting any fucking closer to the kid. Stereo audio confirms that the crying noise has not increased in volume and remains approximately 200 meters below the subject. It's been noted. Please continue. The subject continues another 28 flights before stopping. 50 flights total. D8432 is standing on the 50th, 51st landing, continuing the initial ground level landing. D8432 is estimated to be 200 meters below the initial platform. 34 minutes have elapsed. The volume of the crime has not increased. I, f I feel a bit uneasy. You spent a long time in a dark, unknown stairwell. It's natural. Please continue. The subject hesitates before stepping down the next stairs. As the subject moves forward, the flood lamp illuminates a face 
located approximately at the bottom of the flight. This is SCP-0871. It appears to be the same size and shape as a human head, except it is lacking in mouth, nostrils, and pupil. The face is completely motionless, but it makes direct eye contact, indicating its awareness of D-48432. Oh fuck! What the fuck was that? Shit, holy shit! What the fuck? Can you please describe what you see? It's some sort of fucking person's face thing. Uh, it's it's fucking looking right at me. Uh, fuck, it's, it's looking right at me. Is it moving? No. It's just staring at me. Fuck, it's creepy. Please approach it and further illuminate the entity. Fuck it, I don't want to fuck it. The face jerks forward about 50 centimeters directly towards D-8432. Fuck! D-8432 enters a panic state and rapidly ascends SCP-087. D-8432 reaches the ground floor in 18 minutes, at which time he collapses and passes out. There is no sign of SCP-0871. We reviewed the footage and the case that an equal number of flights and steps ascending and descending. The audio of the crying and pleading remain at the same volume until the last flight, at which point it ceases. Medical reports indicate collapse was a result of rapid ascension of stairs, causing fatigue. The following document is a conversation between D-9035 and Dr. D-9035 is a 28-year-old African-American male of strong build. Psychological background indicates no abnormalities except an extreme hate for women. Subject has, been, has an extensive record of D-9035 is equipped with a 100 watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream and an audio headset for communication with doctor at control D9035 is also equipped with a backpack containing 100 small LED lights with adhesive backs and battery life of approximately three weeks. Lights turn on and off by compressing them. D9035 shines a flood lamp down the first flight of stairs. Despite the extra wattage, the light does not illuminate beyond the ninth step. You want me to go down there, Doc? Please shine your flood lamp outside of SCP-087 to verify it's functioning properly. D-9035 shines a light into the hallway. Comparison with the footage from Exploration 1 confirms it is indeed brighter. Thank you. Please continue to the first landing. Hey Doc, I know you, uh, you said all, uh, all, but I think I want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. Please continue to the first landing. Doc, look, I... Please continue to the first landing. D9035 pauses for 18 seconds, then descends 13 steps to the first landing and stops. Is that a kid? Please remove one of the adhesive lights and affix it to the wall on the landing. Doc, you hear that? Is that a kid down there? That's unconfirmed. Please affix an adhesive light to the wall and verify its functioning. D9035 hesitates, then removes one of the lights from his backpack and adheres it to the wall. He presses on the light and it turns on. Please turn off your flood lamp. D9035 hesitates again before turning off the lamp. The LED light illuminates the landing, but does not extend beyond the first step either way. Thank you. You may turn your flow lamp back on. Please continue to descend. At each landing, affix an LED light to, in, to the wall and turn it on. 
If you notice anything unusual, please report it. D9035 turns the flood lamp back on, then descends the next flight of stairs. As he sets foot on the landing, the audio picks up sounds of pleading and crying, consistent with those of the first exploration. Can you still hear the previous reported audio? Uh, yeah, she, she sounds about uh, 150, maybe 200 meters down. Am I supposed to get her? Look, Doc, I, I don't do good with kids. Please place the light and continue down until you notice anything unusual. The subject adheres to the light to the wall and turns it on, then continues to the next landing. He adheres the third LED light to the wall and turns it on. D9035 continues in this matter for the next 25 flights before stopping. I don't think I am getting any closer to the kid, Doc. How far below would you estimate the source of the sound to be? Same as before, 150 or 200 meters down. Thank you. Please proceed. D9035 continues in the same fashion for the next 24 flights. At the 51st landing, he stops. Footage shows an orchid gaug in the concrete wall, estimated to be approximately 50 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. The first step down from the landing appears to be completely smashed into rubble. You see that? Yes. Can you please describe what you see? Uh, looks like something's slashed at the wall. And the steps over here are all crumbled up and stuff. The smash marks uh, look really smooth though. Yeah, it's, it's smooth. Feels like glass. Thank you. Please continue down. Look, Doc, I, I think I've gone far enough. Please continue down, as per our agreement. I don't want to be doing this, agreement or not. D9035 steps over the destroyed steps and continues down the staircase. Nothing is notable at the next landing. D9035 adheres a LED light to the wall and continues in the same fashion for another 38 flights. The sound of the crying and pleading still has not gotten closer. D9035 is on the 80th, 89th landing and 74 minutes have elapsed from the beginning of the exploration. Subject is estimated to be 350 meters below the initial platform. I feel the kid is just trying to lower me down here, Doc. I think it's time for me to... D9035 stopped talking and moved as the flood lamp illuminated SCP-0871. The face is staring directly at D9035, again indicating awareness of the subject's presence. Although SCP-0871 appears to be unmoving, its location is 38 flights below its initial encounter in Exploration 1, indicating it is mobile. Is there some reason you stop? D9035's breathing grew heavier. SCP-0871 remains immobile for an additional 13 seconds. SCP-0871 blinks. Subject D9035 starts to yell in an incomprehensible manner. SCP-0871 jerks forward until it's approximately 90 centimeters from D9035. Sub the subject, uh, D9035, turns and flees up the stairs. Please relax and calm down. Turn around. We need a closer look at the face. D9035 ignores Doctor and continues rapidly ascending. He continues to scream incomprehensibly. D9035, can you hear me? Please slow down. D9035 is unresponsive and continues rapidly climbing the stairs. His screams diminish in blabbering. After ascending 72 flights, D9035 collapsed on the 17th landing. D9035, can you hear me? D9035 is unresponsive, but heavy breathing can be heard through the audio feed. 
For the next 14 minutes, D9035 is in mobile. The visual feed is black and, and audio pick up only the subject's breathing and the continuous pleading coming from below. After 14 minutes and 32 seconds of unchanging visuals and audio feed, the sound of a rapid heartbeat not consistent with a human's heartbeat and a low cracking noise is heard. Seven seconds later, D9035 grasps and revives, continuing his ascent of the stairs rapidly and wordlessly. The heartbeat and cracking cease, and nothing abnormal is detected on the visual feed. He remains unresponsive. D9035 exit SCP-087 and sits on the floor outside of the entrance. D9035 then enters a catonic state from which he has not yet recovered. There is another document called document number 0873 that features the conversation of Dr. And D9884, a 23-year-old female who was also sent into SCP-087. If you would like to read it for yourself, there will be a link in the description to the website, to the SCP website, where you can read the document for yourself. Again, thank you for watching. If you have any SCP suggestions or creepypasta suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching.